my first question to you is what should the government's next step be for ensuring faster broadband rollout and equal internet access to each and every indian okay so that's a good question and uh, uh, if you look at it if you dissect it uh, you you actually asked me two questions one is uh, how should broadband reach fast to every citizen and the second part is how should it be affordable okay so how should it reach we have to take internet with requisite amount of bandwidth to every you know, house and for that we require two things one is uh, uh, fiberization uh, fiber should reach every village fiber from there uh, it should go on spectrum or it can go on fiber again or on copper to every house uh, second is we have to uh, take internet that means densification of towers so now these two things have to be improved and colossally improved uh, to villages to every house and here we there are the, the government and uh, the operators are uh, cognizant of this fact that this has to be done there are efforts being made from both sides that uh, it uh, has to be done at the fastest uh, the national broadband mission also is there you know which shows the government's intent uh, however there are issues which we can talk about later the second thing is making it affordable now the cost price determines the selling price if the cost price is less the selling price will be less but if you uh, want services uh, at a cheaper cost than whatever has been uh, invested in for it that becomes difficult and that is another challenge so these these are the things uh, if uh, addressed properly it will take internet to every citizen earliest and at an appropriate cost right 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 uh, so sir uh, my next question to you is uh, like we have seen you supporting the use of street furniture for 5g uh, now do you think it will increase the network rollout cost significantly for the telcos no i think there is a, a little difference of understanding that if the street furniture is for 5g Now, for rollout of 5G, uh, and if we have to give 5G with high capacities, high bandwidth, low latency, uh, what what are the hallmarks of 5G? We have to see uh, that we use higher frequencies, maybe in the 3.3 gigahertz range. At that frequency, we cannot achieve too much of uh, uh, you know a physical range from a tower if we have to maintain the capacity. therefore we have to have multiple towers and those towers will radiate for about 10 meters to 100 meters uh, maximum 1 kilometer not beyond that and it will be radiating in much lower power than what a traditional tower radiates okay now to set that up one one of uh, absolute way of thinking is that we set up towers at every 100 meters and then say okay we will use uh, these huge towers to roll out 3 or 5g now that doesn't make sense to either you or to me or to anybody else so therefore uh, we have to then look around scout around in the environment what we find is electricity poles and telephone poles which are approximately at these distances the the separation between one pole to another pole is approximately the same if we are permitted to just mount our antennas onto these poles then we we have an environment which is ready made uh, where we can roll out 5g uh, of of a very high standard uh, at a, at a lower power output and at a, uh, it will cover about uh, 10 meters to 100 which is like i told you but the capacities will be huge the capacities may go up to 100 times of what we are getting now speeds may will go up uh, uh, substantially and therefore we are asking that we should be permitted access to these you know, towers the which we colloquially call as street furniture it also includes uh, other uh, installations like uh, uh, rooftops of government buildings things of that nature now it uh, it will not increase cost it will actually decrease cost because uh, we are in the same breath we are asking the government that they should not charge us uh, Uh, levies and taxes and rentals for these towers because they are already for these poles use of these poles so 
uh, we are asking the government to put a regulation in place, to put a policy in place, which today is non-existent, as to how we can use these poles to roll out 5G. Uh, both TRAI and DOT are working on this uh, to roll out a regulation and a policy respectively, and we are assisting them. We're working hand in glove. Uh, once this policy is out, the rollout of 5G in areas where it is required will become much easier. However, in areas where uh, we require the greater spread, uh, where the physical distances are more important uh, and not, not the capacity, uh, not the bandwidth, for example, in rural areas, there we will go in for traditional towers as we've been doing so far. So uh, a nutshell answer to your question is no. Street, use of street furniture will actually reduce the cost and increase uh, uh, the way uh, uh, the uh, uh, our capacity to roll out and in a suitable time frame, which is much shorter than if we had to erect towers or poles ourselves. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, sir, my next question is: uh, We have seen the government taking some considerable steps to help the sector in the last few months. Now, what should DOT do more to ensure that the overall health of the sector improves from here on? See, let me first congratulate the government. Uh, the, after a long time, the government has come out with uh, conducive reforms, uh, which, which will help the uh, telecom sector certainly. Uh, yeah. uh, they have not come out with shops. That should be very clear. They have only, only come out with something which facilitates the telecom sector. You know, both financially and operationally. Uh, and that is what is expected. That is what, uh, It's a good thing that has happened. What do we expect more? Uh, yes, we expect uh, ease of doing business. Uh, we expect, uh, for example, when I say ease of doing business, you see, Government of India has issued guidelines uh, for ROW in 2018. Now, these guidelines are uh, not being followed in letter and spirit. Uh, across the country. Uh, there are some governments who are following it, some state governments who are following it, some municipalities who are following it. More often than not, very few of them are following it. And uh, we need this to be implemented. And why they're not following it? Because uh, telecom being a central subject, the telecom services are regulated and uh, policied by the central government. But to provide those services, we require civil works also, like digging, laying fiber, erecting towers. So those things come in the jurisdiction of state government. Many times it is not even in the jurisdiction of state government, it comes into the uh, jurisdiction of uh, the local self-government. And they see this as a revenue source, least realizing that if they deny this to come up, or uh, they put exorbitant charges on this, uh, and it doesn't become, uh, uh, you know, financially viable for an operator to put up uh, a tower there or to dig uh, a trench to lay out fiber, then actually their, their own area suffers. Okay, that, that is something they are not realizing. They should realize that. And secondly, even in the central uh, government, every ministry has its own uh, rules and sometimes they come and clash with each other. Now, this uh, guideline, which has been issued by the uh, DOT, at times comes, comes uh, in uh, contention with, say, railways, comes in contention with, say, uh, airports, Authority of India. They have their own rules, and they are finding if it comes in contention with even uh, defense. So we have to come out with a comprehensive policy which cuts across all ministries, all state governments. And this obviously will have to be done at the cabinet level. And this is what we are pushing for. We are wanting a cabinet policy to go out, which is uniformly applicable across the country. Then we will see uh, these aberrations going away. For example, uh, the ROW rule says 10,000 rupees per kilometer is the charge um, which the governments can lay, uh, levy. <laughs> You'll be surprised to know that there are cities where uh, this charge has gone up to about one crore per kilometer. So see the difference. Recommended price ten thousand, charge price one crore. So this is this is a major problem. And this is what the government has to address, and I'm sure they will. Uh, the uh, second thing which uh, 
they can do is use technology and they're doing it. They're trying to do it. They, they use uh, integrated technology to link up all the portals which have been set up by various uh, concerned agencies like state governments so that uh, approvals, charges, etc., can be monitored and facilitated expeditiously by use of technology. We, we are technical people. We are I, ICT. So we should use ICT in the manner it is supposed to be used uh, with the requisite amount of uh, regulation and requisite amount of policy. Uh, it is being done. Uh, 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 most of the states have their own portals. Few of the states have a portal which can be integrated and linked with the central portal. Uh, there are only about two, uh, two states and one union territory who have not yet uh, made their own portal. Then uh, uh, the, there are only two states who have not come out uh, with, uh, with their ROW policies as a consequence of the central ROW policy. That should be done. And all policies should then uh, follow the directives which have been given by the central policy. These, these are things what I'm referring to as ease of doing business. There are other small things which, uh, of course, are there. Government has addressed some of them. Government is addressing uh, more of them. And only then our infrastructure will get built. Once the infrastructure gets built, then only you can actually roll out uh, the network. Without infrastructure, how can we roll out the network? And um, this is a facilitation exercise. The second exercise is making us uh, financially capable of participating uh, in rolling out a network and taking the 5G services to every citizen of this country. In that, the major portion of the expense uh, goes towards uh, spectrum auctions. Now, these spectrum auctions uh, go off, uh, have been uh, sold at an atrocious base price, and resulting in about 60 to 70 percent of spectrum not being sold. So, a spectrum is not something which you can hold in the cupboard and think that you, you may get some money out of it or it will mature and give you better returns, it won't. So actually we lost out by uh, missing the you know, woods for the trees. Uh, we are, we've been thinking that we will get uh, very high prices, very high revenues for the government by keeping an artificially high uh, price, base price. But now in 5G, if we, if we follow the same principle, there will be problems. 5G is capital intensive. 5G does not have a ROI in sight yet because there are no use cases which will get us that type of ROI. And therefore, government has to look at this uh, pricing uh, uh, very carefully. And we, we have uh, uh, given our responses to the consultation paper which has been uh, brought out by TRI, in which we were asked for very substantial reduction in the prices, we are, we are maintaining that uh, no, for, uh, forbearance should be there. The, let, let the market decide the price. Why are you putting a base price? There are competitors. Automatically, pricing will be decided and will settle down at the level at which uh, it can be actually sold as for market forces. So we, we are insisting on that principle to be followed. Uh, rather than uh, controlling it, uh, at artificial prices and not selling off the spectrum uh, fully or in in the percentage that we anticipated to be sold, that will be good for the country. Okay. So these are some of the measures that need to be taken and uh, which will facilitate uh, uh, the telecom sector to go forward uh, with greater energy and with uh, greater will uh, to take uh, telecom services to the citizens at a very low price. Even now, we are the lowest in the world. We don't want to break that. We want to continue to give the services at, uh, at one of the lowest prices in the world and also give uh, high quality services, which uh, India has been given. So uh, government is looking at all these aspects. Uh, we are consulted and we have given our inputs. Uh, so let's see how it goes. 5G, you must understand, Tane. Uh, is a different uh, kettle of fish, you know, a kettle of tea. The, the point you must understand is that up to 4G, the revenue is coming only from auctions. Okay, 
Now, the, 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 there will be revenue from auctions, but there will be manifold more revenue from the industries which are going to flourish by use of this network. 5G is meant for connected world. 5G is meant to connect machine to machine, machine to human, which means industry 4.0 can be enabled only if 5G is there. And the revenue which will come out of this industry will far surpass any type of revenue that you can still get from standalone telecom. That is something that the government uh, must realize and they must be forced, they must look at it strategically rather than looking at it uh, uh, tactically. And that is important for the industry, important for the country. And more importantly, it is the most important thing uh, for, for service, telecom services to go to the citizen at a very, very affordable price. Right, thank you, sir. So, uh, sir, continuing with the topic of spectrum, for the upcoming spectrum uh, auctions, what are your views about different methods for spectrum allocation to both telcos and satcom players? Like satcom players want it to be allocated in an administrative manner and then telcos are against it. So what are your views on that? So whenever there is uh, scarcity or whether there are more contenders uh, for any article, everyone will have his own view as to how it uh, should come or how it should be um, uh, administered. So I suppose uh, this is no different. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, mm -hmm. uh, people will have different views in different sectors. And uh, uh, the, our only thing is that in case, uh, in whatever manner you have to do it, do it fast. The entire uh, thing is on our head and do it uniformly. You, if, if uh, say, uh, uh, if you say if you see the OTT players, for example, if they are going to give same type of services, ICT services to a citizen, what uh, TSPs give, then you can't say that uh, the OTT players will be governed by different rules and uh, the TSPs will be governed by different rules. So our contention has been that please use the same rules for the entire sector who give the same type of services, irrespective of who the person is or who the, which sector you are talking about. Right, sir. So, uh, sir, how prepared is the telecom industry for another lockdown if it happens? Like, is the infrastructure up to speed? Are the telcos doing enough? If, if there's another lockdown, how do you think India will uh, face the calamity? Uh, you, you got the experience behind you. In the first lockdown, everything came all of a sudden. Uh, the telecom sector was... Uh, uh, the only sector which reacted immediately and we could provide the services throughout the lockdown without a break. So if we could do it at that time, I don't see any reason why we can't do it now when we are expecting that such a thing can happen. Of course, we are prepared. We are definitely prepared. Uh, we are also saying that there were some uh, areas uh, which were gray in the last lockdown. For example, uh, telecom workers were not declared as frontline workers. We have asked the government that in this current scenario, they should be declared as frontline workers. They should uh, give, be given free access of movement so that the telecom services don't suffer. Technically, network-wise, uh, we have no problems. Uh, but movement, uh, feet on street, at times becomes a problem because if you have to take a pass for every time that you move from one place to another, or you are not given vaccination uh, because you don't come into the priority, a group, then uh, that that actually becomes a damper. So that is what we have asked the government. That the duty has been very supportive. They have written to the Home Ministry. They have written to the Health Ministry to support us in this and issue out a notification for this purpose. Okay, sir. Uh, so uh, taking the cue from CUI, GSMA event last week, what kind of committee and institution are already in place with respect to the deployment of small cells and uh, what kind of infra infrastructure does the country need in order to assist the future of 5G? Yeah, let me take the last part first. Uh, I already covered that in my answers previous to this question. I already told you that we require a huge amount of fiberization. At this point of time, uh, the, the fiberization of our towers is only about 30%. We want it to go up to about 70 to 80%. 
So fibers, uh, fiber rollout has to be facilitated. Again, I have uh, dealt in detail about the ROW part because fiber can't go without ROW. That has to be facilitated. Uh, towers will have to be facilitated. So th th this is how the infrastructure will roll out. Then uh, on top of this, we, we require the uh, uh, clarity on spectrum, both technical as well as commercial. And technical in the sense we should know uh, in what time frame, what bands are going to be made available and uh, how much spectrum will be made available. Will it conform to the recommended uh, uh, level what is given by the uh, 3GPP or will it be less? Your services, quality of our services will depend on that. The second part is about the commercial aspect. I just mentioned in the last question, it is a very important aspect. The third third part is about timeliness. Uh, if we if we don't uh, do the spectrums in time, uh, it will become uh, and the launch will become further delay. But I think the government is quite serious about this entire thing and the way consultation papers are coming out, the way uh, indicators are coming out. I'm sure that uh, auction should happen in the first quarter, second quarter. That definitely auctions have to happen. And thereafter, the government has indicated that they would like to see 5G rollout at least in 13 cities by 15th August. And uh, uh, we are saying we can do it, uh, provided you uh, give us spectrum at an appropriate cost and appropriate time. Uh, and, uh, with these factors, I think we are quite ready, we're quite geared up to uh, roll out tele uh, 5G in the, in the, in the country. But obviously, it will not be countrywide. It is not required countrywide immediately. It will uh, conform to places where it is required. Uh, at other places, you know, possibly standalone 5G in some places. In some places, 4G will continue. So it is not as if we are going to change the uh, entire uh, telecom cover of the country into 5G overnight. It will, it's not required. It's not that it can't be done, but it's not required, not as it cost effective. Uh, not as a subscriber requirement. So um, it will go out uh, selectively. And that is the beauty of uh, fi uh, 5G. It can be done in that manner by using features like network slicing, edge computing, things of that nature. So uh, in, a, in one word, yes, we are ready. Facilitate us, we'll do it. Okay. The second part is about uh, the small cells. Yes, uh, we dwelt upon small cells when we released the COI DSMA paper last week. And uh, that has been received well. Uh, prior to that itself, we have started working uh, with DOT and TRAI. Uh, a committee has been formed in DOT. Uh, a committee will very soon be formed in TRAI also to look at this aspect. Uh, it's not that two committees can't, why are two committees required? They are required because TRI sees it from a regulatory point of view, DOT sees it from a policy point of view. So if both committees are functioning, then uh, the, uh, the entire uh, issue uh, is handled at, in one go. And that is what we are hoping will happen very soon. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, much is said, all the private telecom operators went ahead with uh, prepaid tariff hikes. So, do you think there's still a scope for floor tariffs, like for floor pricing or something like that? Well, I don't uh, visualize that uh, anymore uh, because I, I, I don't know. Because if on one hand we are uh, saying that, uh, the, or like TRA is saying that uh, let the market dynamics take over to decide the price. We are agreeing with that, uh, but we are saying apply the same principle for spectrum auction. So we are consistent in saying that market forces, okay, apply it across the services that you give us. If you're applying it to floor prices, also apply it to uh, spectrum options. Okay, don't artificially hike up prices there, let the market decide. So this is where it stands and uh, this is, uh, uh, what we have conveyed to TRI also. So hopefully they will take stock of this. So, sir, my last question to you is, uh, 
like there have been uh, announcements regarding 6g 6g developments and uh, setting up of committees or uh, something like that so can you share anything regarding that yeah the committee has been set up a high level committee has been set up under the chairmanship of uh, the secretary telecom and this has been done recently and um, uh, we expect 6g rollout to happen commercially in, uh, in about 10 years time from now uh, internationally okay uh, we may not have been the forerunners of 5g uh in the last decade but we expect to be the front runners in 60 yeah, uh in this decade and with that in mind uh, the dot has set up a high level committee where within that committee they set up five sub committees and uh, they are deliberating on various aspects of 60 both technical regulatory and policy uh, as we speak today the, there is a meeting going on for uh, in one of the sub committees uh there are we are we are represented there uh, i am on that on the committee then uh, two of my colleagues are on uh, all the five sub committees and uh, there are oems there are academic uh, uh, people uh, on, on all these committees uh, there, there there are uh, various uh, stakeholders on the committees we have also requested the government if they can also include the tsps individually in some of the committees hopefully that will happen but uh, fast work has started we, we i hope and uh, i think we will be the front runners in 6g right hey, thank you sir that will be all from my end thank you so much for your time